Technique 1. The New Trick Progress Forcer How to always have time for a new trick One thing I realized early on is that the number one reason why jugglers stop progressing is because they stop doing what worked for them from the very beginning. It's to always take the energy and time to learn new, harder tricks. It's straightforward and a no-brainer that if you want to progress over your current abilities, the thing to practice that would create the most progress for you wouldn't be by practicing something you can already do, but would need to be something that overcomes your current limits. This truth, as said, shows itself from the very beginning when a juggler first takes the leap to go from juggling two balls and goes for three. There's always the next step to take and interestingly we tend to do a lot of things right when we just start out practicing juggling by going beyond our limits with newer, harder tricks. The question is, why do we abandon and stop going for the new? The problem is, once you established enough tricks to spend your time on practicing in your practice session, there is no more time for the new. Once you get to that point, there never seems to be enough time to practice all of the tricks that you can already do and then still remain to practice as many new and harder tricks as you did when you just started out juggling and progressed rapidly. Jugglers usually think that the reason why their progress slowed down is that the tricks they practiced got harder compared to those ones they practiced at the beginning of their progress. But harder is a relative word. For a beginner, learning to juggle four balls might be as difficult as for an improved juggler learning a trick with five clubs. It all depends on the current skill level the juggler is at. If you aim at progress, this problem will regularly come up in your practice over and over again. So one of the most important tasks to create progress is to always have time and energy to practice the new trick. But how can you make time for the new if you don't even have time to practice the tricks you already need to practice? What is the best way to prioritize your tricks and plan it in a way to get the maximum effect? Which tricks should get priority or where should you even put the new trick in your practice session? But most importantly, when is the time for learning a new trick? The very first technique I've created and I would like to start out with is just about to solve that. It solved this problem not only for me, but with whoever I shared it with, and it's meant to solve yours. It's called the new trick progress forcer. If you're going to use and follow this single one technique, you will get the first key concept of keeping progressing without stopping or having bigger gaps in your progress flow. However, in order to get fast juggling success and really get the fastest progress with the techniques in this book, there are going to be several theories you will need to understand in order to execute the techniques properly. Once you understand these theories, it will allow you to learn a certain set of practices and step-by-step -step skills the right way. If you don't understand the theories, which the principles and techniques that you are going to learn are built on, then you won't be able to understand the practices and the skills the right way, and you won't be able to leapfrog ahead in progressing. So first, let me teach you some basic theories in psychology. Once you understand the theoretical elements, you will be able to use the step-by-step -step method to effective practicing and fast progress. One of the most important theories I built my technique upon is the 99% theory, which explains a lot of our psychological behavior not only about our practicing routines, but generally the way we go about routines in all our life. So here it is, the 99% rule. What scientists found out not so long ago is that 99% of what we do and think today are exactly the same things we did and thought the day before. And it's like that almost every day in our lives. 99% of the emotions that you feel are the same as you had the day before. 99% of the actions and the ways you do them and how you move, all the stuff is the same as the day before once you established your daily routine. At least, that's true for the majority of people. Once your time of a day is full of certain activities, those activities become like an unchangeable habit, till there's no more time for the new. This might sound very familiar to our practice. Once you establish a certain set of routines which take up all of your time in your practice session, there's rarely any time for the new. Or if there is, you have to give away some of your time from something else. 
Still, most of the time, the 99% usually remains. We think the same thoughts, we take the same paths, we sit on the same places. Everything is just the same way, we just don't realize it. We might put the things we do in different order and think, yeah, I choose the way I do things. While in reality, maybe only the order changed. Yet, it gives us the feeling of control. That process of habiting is called as myelination by modern neuroscience. Myelination is a process where paths are paved inside our mind similarly, like a highway is paved. And it's literally paving a road on which we follow through each time we come to the same situation. As we go these pathways more and more, it becomes easier every time to go on the same road the next time and the next time and we keep paving over it once we started using them. So in order to connect this concept to juggling, I have a simple question for you. If 99% of everything we do, generically, is the same as yesterday, do we challenge ourselves enough throughout the day? What would you say how much of the tricks that we practice every day and the routines that we go about are the same as yesterday and the day before? The answer might be probably almost 100%. The reality is, if 99% of what you do is almost the same as the day before, your results, accordingly to that, are changing slowly as well. At best, maybe 1% a day. Yet we think that this way we will progress accordingly to our goals of progressing, if we have any. Think about this concept a little deeper. If almost 100% of your practice is almost the same as it was the day before, how can you make a quantum leap from where you are now to where you ultimately want to get? There must be a shift in the way naturals practice, from the way we go about it. If you see, for instance, a VGF video, what do you think? Do you believe they got there by doing 99% or 100% of their practice exactly the same way as the day before? How could you explain the rapid progress some youngsters are showing us year by year, with results that others weren't even able to accomplish in a decade? They must have done something very differently. And it's not their talent that makes the difference, but by the way they approach things. If 99% of their practice would have been the same as it was the day before, they would have never achieved such progress. They would have progressed very inefficiently. Now that doesn't mean that naturals would go randomly about their practice and would change the order of things every day. It wouldn't mean either that they don't work on their routines sufficiently. It's not like that at all. They do a very specific order of things which includes constant change, yet they repeat it day after day. It's a routine of constant change. It's almost the opposite how everybody else does it, and I will give you a very specific and simple example of what I mean. What would you say when it is the most logical to practice a new trick? What would be the right way to do it? at the beginning, the middle, or the end of your practice. Most people would say as a general knowledge that the best time to practice something new is of course at the end of a practice session, right? What's the explanation to that answer? Well, there are a lot of explanations and logic behind it. First of the explanations would be that you need to go through your tricks in order to warm up and build your skill up systematically. Then you need to practice your routine tricks, of course, in order to still be able to carry them out effectively. After you did all that, then perhaps you can move on to your new tricks. So we got to know so far what everybody believes. First you need to go through your routine before practicing a new trick, and that's the priority. We could easily say that it's accepted as the right way, and the way how everybody else does it. The right way of doing things is to start with going through 99% of what you already can do. That's considered as the norm. If we make a diagram of the stages how practicing usually occurs, to the majority, it would look something like this. Energy and focus level. Throughout the day, we only have a certain amount of focus and energy. 
So here's a green line on the diagram that would represent our energy and focus level that we can take to concentrate ourselves towards a certain task. When we start out, this line is quite high. But as we practice along the way, as our energy gets used up, it gets lower throughout our practice. Now we will distinguish two kinds of energy in this blueprint. Quality energy and quantitative energy. First, quality energy is the energy that is full of focus and activity. It has the power to be used in order to overcome your current abilities and skill level. Quantitative energy is just a mass of energy that is neither focused nor active. It's passive energy that you could refer to as available to be used if you put pressure into doing something. It's where you need to make yourself do something and it feels like a hassle. Now we will put another line into this diagram and it will be the line of current maximum skill level. What does the current maximum skill level mean? As the name implies, it is your current maximum level of capability. It shows the difficulty of tricks that you are able to do currently. It's your current maximum. If the hardest trick you can do is with 4 clubs, 5 or 7, it doesn't matter because it's individual. Whatever you are capable of at most right now, where you are on the edges of your ability but still being able to handle it, that's your current MSL. Where it gets interesting is if we go deeper into the way how practicing usually occurs. When we usually start out practice, as we said, we usually go through everything that we are already able to do. We start out with our routine-based tricks. We start out with something comfortable, and then as we go on in our practice, we slowly make it more difficult, one thing after another. Until we feel we can handle each of the tricks to feeling of almost having 100% control over it. All of these are tricks you already achieved and are able to do. You start out with the easiest things and then you progress slowly to the harder next trick. Building up the difficulty level as you adapt yourself towards the heightening difficulty, one after another. Going through your arsenal of tricks. Once you've gone through your tricks, you may even repeat practicing certain routine tricks that you probably felt full of control over till even the day before. But now, they might seem out of shape, so you rehearse them and take care of them. Now usually after a while you reach a point where you feel at your best, where you've gone through everything and made sure that you will not get any worse in your routine tricks. Usually by the time you feel at your best, you have already used up most of your energy and the end of your practice. You start to get tired at this point and near to finish up. The mindset of jugglers using this approach most of the time is, the important thing is done, I've gone through my routine tricks and made sure not to get worse at them. They think they really use their energy well for the important stuff, going through everything to make sure not to get worse. If we examine this mentality, it's driven by the fear of losing something. Losing a trick we already worked hard to achieve and got worse at them. The priority that takes control is not to get worse, rather than to improve. It's the first thing to do before trying to acquire any new skills. I will list many psychological biases that apply in juggling, and one of the most important cognitive biases is called two words and away from motivation. The question is, are you motivated by gain or by fear? People move away from the things they don't want and towards the things they do want. We are driven by greed and desire as well as driven by pain and fear. Now as it turns out, humans are about not less than twice as much motivated to move away from the things they don't want to happen than motivated to go towards the things they do want to happen. Gain is not as motivational as pain is. Fear, pain and the threat of something bad happening motivates us about twice as much as pleasure and gain. What that means is, if we have the chance to maybe win $100, but also have the risk of losing our $100, we don't take the chance. At least in general, most of us don't. We don't like to take risks. Humans have a heightened sense of risk. 
In fact, most people look out more for the risk than the opportunity. In other words, they consciously and unconsciously look at what they are to lose, and they make many of the decisions, if not most of the decisions, in their life, based on avoiding loss. The same way jugglers make decisions in their practice. Instead of moving forward and get gain, they behave to move away from losing. So the only logical step for them to go for a new trick is first not to lose the old ones. And after making sure that the important part is done, it's an ideal time to try a new trick. Usually most of the jugglers don't even bother to practice a new trick, mainly because they already feel too tired and worn out of going through all their routine tricks. So the best option in their mind is to have a lucky day when they might be successful going over and finishing practicing their routine tricks earlier so that they still have time and energy for trying out a new trick. Now most of the time jugglers hope their routine tricks will go well enough and fast enough so that they might have some time for practicing something new. So what's the matter with this strategy? The only problem with it is that it's almost the exact opposite of how naturals practice. Let me ask you again, what would you say is needed to overcome your current skill level? What is needed to overcome your current abilities and to literally overcome your limits? You would probably agree that it's not something you can already do, but it would need to be something that is slightly more difficult than you are currently capable of right now. It is something that overcomes your current skill level, something that pushes you on the edges of ability and takes you out into the unsafe territory where you really face difficulty and error. It's what gets you out of your comfort zone. Let me ask you if you want to overcome your current skill level and your current ability. You probably would need to be in the best possible shape with the most amount of energy and the best focus you can have. Would you agree that to be logical if you want to improve yourself? Now when would you say we have the most energy, willpower and focus in our practice? At the beginning of our practice, the middle or at the end? At the beginning, right? It's when you start out your practice. So with that in mind, here's the golden question. Why are we trying to accomplish something that overcomes us even when we are full of energy and in the most active state at a time when we are even in a worse state than when we started out. Your energy level, willpower and focus is the lowest at the end of your practice. Yet we decide to put our most demanding trick that would need the most skill, the most energy and focus in order to overcome ourselves right there to the very end. We literally want to reach something that is hard even when we are full of energy. We want to go over our skill level at a time when we are in even worse shape to overcome ourselves than as we started out. Now investing our energy can be a very crucial factor. It's not only about investing physical energy, although that alone could be already enough. But other factors are significantly involved as well. Tony Schwartz in his book power of full engagement, said that the rarest and most valuable form of energy we have is willpower. We get very little of it, and usually we don't use it purposefully. In a study, psychologists did an experiment where they made people watch a very emotional movie. The task in the experiment was that half of the people were instructed to repress their emotions while watching the movie and not to express any of it while the other half of the people just had to watch it and emote freely. The interesting part was that after both groups finished watching the movie, they made them do an exercise of focus. The nature of the exercise was to match different colors together that had been very close to each other, so they really had to focus each time trying to get it right. The result of the experiment was that the people who had to repress their emotions with willpower did much worse than the other group who didn't need to use willpower. As it turned out, willpower is tightly connected to focusing and as a form of energy, it affected the results of the group tremendously, even though physically there was no difference in tiredness. Would you say that juggling needs more focus than matching colors together? 
I guess, yeah, it takes a lot more. So what is it that naturals do, and how are they different from us in using their energy during practice? When I said that naturals in juggling do almost the exact opposite, what naturals do is not starting with the 99% of what they can already do, but starting with the 1% they can't do yet, as soon as physically possible. They start with what overcomes their skill level. They almost start their practice with practicing the new level trick. What I mean when I say the new trick is that they start with a trick they haven't mastered yet. Something they can't do yet, something that overcomes their current skill level. Not by going too far, but with something that challenges all their skills. Naturals don't usually indulge in countless hours of practice. They don't practice 10 hours on average, they just usually practice free. But the difference lies behind their investment of energy and the mindset behind their decision-making process. They do what no one seems to do, because it seems illogical and counterintuitive. They might finish their practice with practicing the new trick, but they never wait till they get past the point of low-value energy. So, let's get back to the practice diagram and divide it into three parts based on energy and focus levels. Depending on the physical difficulty of the trick, naturals either practice the new trick at the beginning or in the middle of their practice. While doing it, they build a much faster road towards it than others, but either way, they never put it to the end where they lost most of their quality energy. The new level trick gets into one of the two-thirds of their time, either in the high value or in the good value phase. Sometimes, if the new trick consists of a high number, the high value phase is used as a fast warm-up of intensive difficulty in order to be ready to practice the new trick as soon as possible. Low value phases are very rarely used by naturals purposefully. There are even naturals who stop practicing as soon as they hit the low value range. Hearing this you might say, if I put priority on the new level trick, what happens with my routines then? If I commit my time to the new trick and don't practice my routines first, I will get a lot worse at them. Now naturals, as I said, constantly push themselves to new limits with the new tricks, but that doesn't mean at all that they don't practice their routines and the old tricks. It just doesn't get priority. When they accomplish getting better, then they can and usually go back to their routines perfecting it. But progressing always has the priority. They simply start out with pushing themselves over their current skill level, and they use everything they have to get past something they couldn't do before, and that takes more importance in their practice than their routine. Once they get past it and overcome themselves, there's still energy left that can be used on practicing their routine, meaning the stuff they can already do. The most interesting thing comes from a new level trick back to practicing the routine, because it will be almost effortless. By coming from something much harder to something easier syncs with their energy level. As physical energy gets burned and goes lower, the tricks get easier and easier. In contrast with the opposite way how usually practicing occurs and how everybody else does it, which means that as energy gets lower, the tricks get harder and harder. The importance lies behind putting the priority on progress, rather than saving something you already have. A new trick keeps being the new trick, until it keeps being challenging. Once it starts to go well enough, it goes into the routine section. As the emphasis is on progress, it ensures that there's always something new and most importantly something challenging to learn, because every practice arranges itself around it. Okay, so this was the first free sample technique from the Fast Juggling Success ebook, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed creating it. But uh, there's actually a lot more where this is coming from. Now, before you leave me, what I would really appreciate and love you to do is just scroll down and first of all hit that like button if you like this training today and got some real value of it. Also, please leave a comment for me and tell me what you learned in this training and what are your particular thoughts about it. How is this gonna fit into your way of practicing? Is this something you had always in the back of your mind, just never had a clear picture about it? Because that's actually what a lot of jugglers tell me. 
So scroll down, leave a comment below, and if you are interested in the ebook, there will be a link in the description below. So thanks and please share the love and let me know what you thought about this training.